There's so many things you probably missed for this Crown Tundra reveal. Let's break it down. Butterfree, go! Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. Pretty guys, a brand new video today, and today we are diving into an in-depth breakdown of the Crown Tundra reveal trailer today. There are so many things to uncover that you probably missed and that have come out since that reaction video that I posted earlier today. So if you want to see my original reaction and my first thoughts, you can check that out. That'll be in the description of the video. But in the meantime, we are going to break down everything that happened in this Crown Tundra trailer. And again, there was a lot of it. If you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. I post Pokemon videos every single day and YouTube tells me that over 50% of the people who watch my video are actually not subscribed. So take a second out of your day, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. We're working towards a million subscribers. It's a personal goal of mine. I've been working at it for over 10 years, believe it or not. It's, it's, it, I actually have, it's crazy. But let us not waste any time. Let's jump into this. Let's talk about Galarian Slowking. Let's talk about Pokemon Go. Let's talk about everything about the Crown Tundra. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about here is Galarian Slowking. Now, Galarian Slowking finally revealed for the first time. Looks very cool. Is Poison and Psychic type, which I thought was nice. Uh, not anything super crazy there. But we do have some information about its ability, about uh, its signature move. It's got a signature move as well. So, some really cool things there. So, it has an ability called Curious Medicine. And what that does is when it gets sent into the field, it actually removes all stat changes, which could be really good in VGC, in a Dynamax metagame, or Pokemon setting up, things like that. It basically runs like the move Haze, but built into an ability. So not that bad from a competitive standpoint. And it also has a signature move called Eerie Spell, which is going to reduce the PP of the opponent's move. So not even crazy, but it does have a really, really sick animation. So shouts to Galarian Slowking making its debut in the Crown Tundra and Pokemon Sword and Shield. I actually like the kind of crazy medicine doctor kind of vibe it's got going on. Uh, I, I actually dig it. I actually really like the kind of mage style going on here and not what I expected. I was convinced that Toxapex was going to bite its head, but we were wrong on that one. The next thing to look at is the possibility of quests and various storylines that are going to take place in Crown Tundra. We have this interesting image of this character looking at what seems to be some sort of footprints in this in the snow. We're not really sure what this means, but it was obviously a focal point of the trailer. So this could indicate some sort of quest or some sort of fetch things. Maybe it's to find a certain Pokemon. Maybe it ties directly into the stories, but I definitely thought these steps or these kind of footprints were definitely worth mentioning. We also look at the character running through what seems to be a giant castle. Now, some of the key artwork of the Crown Tundra indicates that there's this giant kind of castle that takes place and perhaps we'll actually be able to explore it. It looks like it's pretty robust, especially just kind of looking at first glance, the character running through this castle. Now we see these incredible tree textures that Sword and Shield is known for with this giant tree that we believe is tied to the legendary birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. And the character's like seemingly trying to shake it almost like you would shake a berry tree. So there's some big question marks there regarding how does this tree tie into those legendary birds, potential quests that could take place, and what's going down here in general. But worth noting that it was pretty cool to see the character and it seems as though they are trying to shake this tree. By looking at Peony, one of the new characters in Pokemon Sword and Shield in the Crown Tundra, we see that he does have a Dynamax band. Now, anyone who's got a Dynamax band generally has some sort of signature Gigantamax Pokemon. Will he be the one who reveals Gigantamax Metal in story? Or will he have something else? Some question marks there. Maybe it's Sandaconda. Maybe he's got G-Max Sandaconda. Who knows, but he does have a Dynamax band on his wrist, which means that you're probably going to battle against him or maybe with him in the Galarian Star Tournament. So a lot of question marks around Peony. He looks pretty sinister in this picture as well, but uh, he does have a Dynamax band. One of the big things that a lot of people I think miss that kind of came out after the fact is the new Den feature actually features rental Pokemon, which is very weird. So it's kind of almost like the Battle Tower style rental where you can actually rent different Pokemon and kind of swap them out as you go. So for this new, I believe as you beat things in the dens, you actually obtain them as part of your team and you can go different paths down these dens to explore to ultimately get to rarer things. It seems a bit more interesting than I guess I initially thought, although I'll be honest, I'm not super convinced that this is going to be a feature that has a ton of replayability. I think it might get kind of old really quickly, but they have announced that they are featuring every single one of the legendary Pokemon in this title for Crown Tundra update. So we're going to have all the legendaries back in the game. They're going to be hidden through this new raid feature. So you are going to have to go and explore these dens one way or the other, right? So this is an opportunity for you to go through, try some different Pokemon out, obtain some Pokemon, and maybe it'll be strategic. Maybe it'll actually be hard and you'll need to team up with good people to actually get through this. But I wanted to point out the rental team feature because that was something that I think that a lot of people kind of missed out on. 
The next image indicates that Articuno and maybe the other birds might roam around the Crown Tundra. Now this is a bit of a stretch and it's a theory at this point in time, but we really can't tell. But it does seem as though it is feasible. This character is running in a seemingly un really unimportant place and Articuno is floating up above. Could this be the return of roaming legendaries like we saw in the uh, Johto region with the legendary beasts? Or is this just a really cool like picturesque scene? But it does seem as though there is the possibility that these legends are going to be roaming after some sort of an event. I think that would be really cool to try to track them down in the open area that is the Crown Tundra, especially since we're considering it to be significantly more robust than what the Isle of Armor was. Here's a really cool snapshot of those underground raids. I thought this was actually really cool seeing kind of like the light fixtures on the side there and the character running into what those underground raids are going to be. And then as you do those raids, you get to choose your path. And as we kind of indicated, there's various things you can do with that in terms of changing your team around. And it doesn't seem as though you're going to use your normal team as we kind of talked about a little bit ago. But this raid feature, I'm going to hold off judgment on it until I get a chance to try it myself. I don't want to get too excited about it, but it might end up being decent. One thing that I wanted to talk about is the brand new update of clothing. We see this character standing in front of a Hydreigon with the eye patch over her, which obviously is a reference to Getsis, one of the evil team leaders in the Unova region. We also see this image of a character looking essentially like Lysander with the team flare glasses on him and a Gyarados. Lysander, of course, known for his mega Gyarados. So some new clothing options, a new stadium outfit with a lot more sponsors on it from the Poke Jobs. So it seems as though there are gonna be a significant amount of uh, Pokemon or uh, clothing options that are going to be in the Crown Tundra. Maybe we'll be able to dress like Team Rocket or something like that. Archie's anchor, or who knows what it's going to be. But some cool stuff, right? Seeing Team Flare, uh, Team Plasma kind of represented through these games. And uh, I thought that was kind of neat. Now, here is some leaked information. Obviously, this is the Pokedex of Pokemon that we're basically expecting to return based on data mining. Uh, we have the circled Pokemon, our Pokemon that were confirmed at this point in time through this trailer. The Pokemon that are not circled are basically ones that have not been revealed or shown yet, but we know that at this point, it seems as though this is all incredibly likely that everything is gonna come to fruition, right? We basically have the entire Dex at our, at our fingertips here, and I do think that this Dex post is indeed legitimate. So if you wanna look through it closer, you're welcome to pause the video, but I think at this point, it's pretty, pretty Pretty much confirmed that this leak from months ago is indeed going to be the real deal here as we look at all the Pokemon that have been shown through today's trailer. As I alluded to earlier in the video, all legendary Pokemon are confirmed. I know that this is a big fan favorite. We're going to be able to use that den feature to kind of explore the dens, get all the legendary Pokemon, do all that stuff. We know the Toppies are coming back, which we'll have to see how this shakes up the competitive metagame. You know, I've never been a big fan of legendary formats, but we'll have to see what they do in terms of competitive as the series continue to change over the coming months as they try to keep Pokemon Sword and Shield competitive metagame fresh before what is most likely to be a new game in 2011. 20, 2021, what year is it? <laughs> It was heavily speculated based on a kind of mishap on Pokemon's point where they did an update when the Isle of Armor came out. There was an item in that update for the raid dens that caused issues in people's game files. It was then later determined that it was a hidden ability capsule of sorts. And now it is indeed confirmed that there is an item called the ability patch. The ability patch is going to allow you to change a Pokemon with a regular ability into a hidden ability. And I passed the question today for you guys. Another question today perhaps is what Pokemon are you most excited to be able to switch their hidden ability? It could create some really interesting things, man. Uh, in terms of Pokemon, you can take a regular ability and switch to hidden ability. It does not th seem as though I could be wrong. I don't know if you can change hidden ability back to regular. I think you can though, actually, let me check. At this point, I think it's a little unclear as to whether you can go from hidden ability to regular. Ability capsules do not do that, by the way. They only switch regular abilities nowadays. But this ability patch will make you go from regular to hidden ability, which I'll tell you makes my life a lot easier as a shiny hunter. I don't necessarily have to stress as much over getting competitively viable shinies when if I hatch the wrong ability, I can use an ability patch down the road. However, they have indicated this could be a pretty limited item, so keep that in mind. They might be hard to come across, and we might only get a few of them per game. We don't know yet. And obviously, if you didn't catch it, the release date is Thursday, 1022. One thing to note about this release date, though, is it seems as though this is 1022 Thursday night, very late in America, and early morning in Japan and parts of Europe. So it really is this 22nd, but it's more like the 23rd. Um, I know that I am very much so known for my marathons, I will say, even though the fact that this release is in October completely throws all my plans out the window, I am still working on getting you guys a marathon. So put it on your calendars for the 
third, because that's what we're going to be aiming for. But just something to note, it looks like it'll be late 22nd for the US, probably more like most people will be playing it on the 23rd. A couple other tidbits of information that I thought were really valuable to point out, one of which is that Pokemon Go transfers into Pokemon Home are going to cost Pokecoins. Now, I'm a big Pokemon Go fan. I love the game, I really do, but recently I stopped playing it and I'm kind of silently boycotting the Mega Raid system. I'm not trying to push my opinion on other people, but I haven't done the Mega Raids myself because I think it's a busted system. I don't think it's very fun to have to grind out that many raids to get Mega Evolution for a temporary boost. It doesn't really appeal to me personally. You have your own opinion, that's fine. Again, I'm not pushing my agenda. I'm personally kind of boycotting the raids because I just, just not a fan. But now it seems as though you are gonna need Poke Coins, which is a, Pay, pay feature, I mean, you can get coins other ways, but for the most part, it's a pay feature to transfer into Pokemon Home. I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's kind of scummy Niantic. We're already paying for Pokemon Home for the extended features. Don't charge us again for that. Seems kind of, kind of meh, in my opinion. Not a fan, if I'm gonna be honest. The last thing I wanna mention is this image right here, which showcases Frostmoth and another Frostmoth farther pushed into the background. There is some speculation about this that that does seem to be a shiny frost moth and while I've looked at it pretty extensively with the naked eye, it's a little hard to tell. My gut feeling is it's not a shiny frost moth, however, it is possible that shinies in the overworld could come to the crown tundra, which would be a pretty ga big game changer. I don't want to get anyone too excited, but it's a little hard to tell. Frost moth is kind of green colored, I'll have my editor edit some stuff here to kind of give you guys the best comparison we can, to kind of show it the best way we can. It's hard to say, my guess is that the shinies are not gonna show in Overworld, it's gonna continue to be like it's been, but this would be an incredible update. We know the shiny Overworld mod models are coded because if you have your Pokemon following you, then they can be shiny when they follow you. So it's not like it's impossible for them to add this in the game, it really isn't. And we do know that Pokemon following you are returning, of course, as we've seen some screenshots of that. But something worth noting, so you guys can let me know your thoughts. Do you think this is a shiny frost moth or do you think it's just regular frost moth and the lighting's just kind of funny and we can't really tell? So that's gonna be pretty much everything in this video. My editor KG went frame by frame through every second of footage to basically pick out everything we could find that would be worthwhile for you guys to hear about for the Crown Tundra update. Don't forget, I will be doing an awesome marathon. I'm working on it right now. I'm working hard to try to get that happening. It's much sooner than I thought it was gonna be, to be honest. But very excited for Crown Tundra, and it's just a couple weeks away. Be sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe, get those notifications turned on. I post Pokemon videos every single day, including my amazing Shining Sword series, which people have been loving. And again, YouTube tells me that so many of you guys are not subscribed. You just get me in the notification recommended feed. But seriously, subscribe, it helps me out. I promise I'm not a bad guy. I think you'll enjoy my content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are excited for the Crown Tundra, and I will see you guys on our next video. Peace. If you guys enjoyed this detailed breakdown, you should totally check out this reaction right here. Otherwise, YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and have yourself an awesome day.